I told you there are so many techniques for the repair of CSF leak and also the choice of graft material varies a lot from autologous to homologous and allogenic. The commonly used ones are fat, fascia lighter, bone, cartilage. You can use temporalis fascia or cadaveric cellular matrix or collagen or dural matrix substitutes can be used. But the easy to harvest from the same area with a reduced rate of infection is the one with the temporalis fascia or uh, fascia later. And for obliteration it is better to use fat. And care should be taken not to use bone cement or metal. Especially titanium screws and mesh are not used because there is chance of chronic infection and also migration of this graft material. The graft placement can be either an overlay where the graft is kept on the nasal side or can be an underlay or the inlay where the graft is kept on the cranial side, intracranially, either between the dura and arachinoid or between the dura and the skull bone, skull, uh, between the uh, bone of skull base. Okay. Or it can be a combined approach also and over the graft, especially if the defect is very wide, that is uh, more than 3 cm wide uh, defect, pedicle flaps are kept over the graft and the workhorse in the reconstruction of skull base defect is nasoceptal flap popularly known as Haddard flap by Haddard and Ittel and this is based on the posterior septal branch of sphenoparietal artery and the advantage is that this flap has got a very good surface area and the arc of rotation is also very good and uh, the typical NSF flap the inferior extent is up to the crust of maxilla but in, if more uh, length is needed this can be uh, included the whole of nasal floor clad can be included another advantage is that this can be elevated and can reuse in case of revision surgery so if the defect is very large even extending from the posterior wall of uh, frontal sinus up to the cella tersica then you, you can use this nasoceptal flap and if the nasoceptal flap we need more flaps uh, include uh, middle turbinate flaps or we can use the inferior turbinate flaps both are again uh, based on spinopalatine artery branches Middle turbinate flaps are less preferred because it is thinner and the surface area is very small and it is technically uh, it's more demanding to harvest the middle turbinate. But inferior turbinate flap is uh, comparatively a good flap. These three are intranasal flaps and these are uh, pericranial flap and temporoparietal facial flaps are also pedicle flaps. And this pericranial flap Bicoronal incision is given So uh, putting a bicoronal incision and a window is created drilled at the nasion and through that this pericranial flap can be rotated into the nasal cavity and this is perfect if the uh, reconstruction is do, uh, you are doing the reconstruction along with the draft 3 procedure okay and also a temporoparietal facial flap is also a pedicle flap in order to improve the re reconstruction to further to further reinforcement some use a dural sealant or fibrin glue over this pedicle flap and also between the nasal pack and the uh, fibrin glue it is better to keep an absorbable gelatin form or the gel form so that at the time of pack removal the stability of this system will not be break, uh, broken. Okay, so in between the nasal pack and the fibrin glue or flap keep a gel form in between. And after that pack the nose either with nasal tampon or antibiotic impregnated petroleum gauze. And pack is removed uh, by 5 to 7 days. Okay. And postoperatively strip bed rest. Laxatives can be given in order to avoid straining. Analgesics for postoperative pain. Antibiotic prophylaxis. Then lumbar drain can be 
kept with a drainage of 20 to 40 ml per day for a period of 3 to 6 days and venous thromboembolism mechanical prophylaxis has to be done. Uh, pack removal as I already told after 5 to 7 days or some uh, institutions keep it for 7 to 10 days. CSF repair will not be complete without the name of these three personalities. I should have mentioned their name in the first class itself. It was Dandy 1926 who successfully uh, completed the intracranial, first intracranial uh, CSF repair and Dolman in 1948 did the first extracranial approach and it was Weigand in 1981 who published a series of uh, endoscopic CSF repair. So my love and respect to these personalities.